Good afternoon, and welcome to the Spring 2018 Baccalaureate Commencement Exercises for the Frank G. Zarb School of Business, the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication, and the Fred DeMattis School of Engineering and Applied Science. We begin our program with the invocation delivered by Chaplain Simi Ahmed from the University's Board of Chaplains, followed by the National Anthem and our alma mater, led by Emily Garner, Class of 2018. The words to the alma mater are on the inside front cover of your program. Will everyone please stand? Good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, praise be to God, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds, most gracious, most merciful, master of the day of judgment. You do we worship, and your aid we seek. Show us the straight way, the way of those on whom you have bestowed your grace not of those who have earned your anger, nor of those who have gone astray. God Almighty, we thank you for bringing us together on this special day to celebrate and honor the graduates of Hofstra University. God, we ask you to look with favor upon the administration of Hofstra University for providing an environment conducive to learning. We ask you, God, to look with favor upon the faculty for their dedication in educating these students. God, we ask you especially to look with favor upon the graduates assembled today. Empower them with wisdom, courage, and compassion. Protect them from moral arrogance. Help them to serve your world and its people with compassion, humility, generosity, and justice. Help them to bring peace and justice to a troubled world. Help them to choose right over wrong, ethics over convenience, and truth over popularity. May they travel the path of integrity without looking back, for there never is a wrong time to do the right thing. Amen. Finally, my congratulations to the graduates, their parents, loved ones, and guests on this special day. May God be with you all. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you.
please be seated. I have the pleasure of making some very special introductions, beginning with Diana Lake and Donald M. Schaefer from our Board of Trustees. I'd also like to introduce members of the Senior Administration, and I ask you to hold your applause until all of the following names are read. Patricia Adamski, Senior Vice President for Planning and Administration. Herman Berliner, Dean of the Frank G. Zarb School of Business. Robert Brinkman, Vice Provost for Scholarship and Research and Dean of Graduate Studies. Stephanie Boucher, Vice President for Institutional Research and Assessment. Melissa Connolly, Vice President for University Relations. Evan Kornob, Dean of the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication. Neil Donahue, Vice Provost for Undergraduate Academic Affairs and Internationalization. W. Houston Darty, Vice President for Student Affairs. Jessica Eads, Vice President for Enrollment Management. Dolores Frederich, Senior Vice President for Legal Affairs and General Counsel. Warren Frasina, Dean of the Hofstra University Honors College. Kathleen Gallo, Dean of the Hofstra Northwell School of Graduate Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies. Jeffrey Hathaway, Vice President and Director of Athletics. Robert Jakevich, Vice President for Information Technology. Alan Kelly, Vice President for Development and Alumni Affairs. Sina Rabani, Dean of the Fred DeMattis School of Engineering and Applied Science. Benjamin Rifkin, Dean of the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and the School of Education. Holly Syrup, Dean of the School of Health Professions and Human Services. And Terry Shapiro, Senior Vice Provost for Academic Affairs. Representing the faculty leadership of Hofstra University, the speaker of our faculty, Stuart L. Bass. Representing the alumni of Hofstra University, Michael Sorrentino, class of 2005, secretary of the Hofstra Alumni Organization. And of course, the person who leads our university, President Stuart Rabinowitz. You know, I learn something every commencement. I always expect the School of Business students to be rowdy. I expect the School of Communications students to make a lot of noise and be raucous, but I have never heard... I have never heard an engineering student even raise their voice until this <laughs> afternoon. Members of the board, now we get serious here. Members of the Board of Trustees, faculty administration, distinguished guests, but most importantly, as we all know, members of the class of 2018 and their proud family and friends, welcome to your commencement exercises. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking I'm going to use this occasion to reveal the secrets of everlasting happiness and forever contentment. I wish I could. If I could, I would. But I can't. And it's not that I'm an unhappy. I mean, I am very content. Somehow I managed to get myself to be president of a great university which has the best college students in the nation. So professionally, I feel great. And personally, I am ecstatic that after decades of waiting and frustration and anticipation, my wife Nancy and I have finally become grandparents. So this, that is the secret of happiness. Grant, be a grandparent, but you're too young, not you yet. But other than having grandchildren, I have come to realize that the secret of happiness is really different for each of us, and that we have to discover our own way in this world and our own fulfillment by ourselves. As to giving you advice on other significant life issues, well, I will leave that task to our incredibly well commence, uh, qualified commencement speakers. I will, however, offer you some very, very modest advice 
on what you might do immediately following the ceremony and perhaps tonight. My first suggestion is for you to hug and thank your parents and your spouses and your relatives and your friend and all the people who helped you reach this monumental day in your lives. And try if you can manage to do that in person and not by Snapbook or Face Chat or Insta Rumble or whatever. Try to do it, try to do it face to face. Second, I suggest, if you can, to express your appreciation to the Hostra faculty member or members who inspired you while you were here. And the administration and the staff who might have made your journey here a bit easier. Our faculty, our administration, and our staff have made the education of young people our calling. So for us, an expression of appreciation from one of our graduates is inspiring and validating. And finally, before you begin on Monday, the next journey, you may not, you may wait. Uh, finally, before you give the, uh, start the next phase in your journey, take a little time to enjoy yourself. You can even party as long as you do so responsibly and while proudly displaying your Hofstra swag. I hope the engineering students heard that. Indeed, this whole commencement ceremony is, at its core, a celebration. We celebrate the accomplishments and the hard work of our graduates and the sacrifices that have been made on their behalf by their family and by their friends. And we also celebrate the many exciting future options and opportunities all that work and all those sacrifices have afforded to the graduates, who today will acquire one of the very rare assets in life which will never, ever depreciate in value their Hofstra degrees. Indeed, we are confident that those degrees will increase in value throughout your careers. And our solemn promise to you is that we will continue to do everything in our power to enhance the stature and reputation of Hofstra and thus the value of your degrees. And so my most important message to our graduates today is quite simple. You have earned our congratulation and our admiration. You've worked hard, you've learned well, and you are ready to take the reins of power, and Lord knows this world needs it. We take pride in your accomplishments, and so should you. So I will close these very brief remarks today, as I have for the past 17 years as president, by wishing each one of our graduates well. I wish each of you all the success that you think you need and all that work and ability earned for you. I wish that you will have the perspective to forgive yourself and to learn from the mistakes because mistakes are inevitable. I wish you the tenacity and the courage and frankly the good fortune which I have had to someday find a life's work about which you feel passionate, rather than just settling for something which neither challenge nor fulfills you. I wish that you will feel the very special sense of satisfaction and self-worth that I have found comes only from using at least some of your talent and some of your energy to help those who are in need. I wish you the wisdom not to forego the love of your family and your friends in a relentless pursuit of material success. And lastly, and this is probably the most difficult, I wish that you not become so preoccupied with achieving some cherished goal on some faraway day that you somehow fail to appreciate each and every day of your life. The class of 2018 leaves here with our admiration and our affection. We enjoyed teaching you and we really did enjoy learning from you. We hope that you will maintain your ties to your classmates and of course to your alma mater. 
From this day forward, your accomplishments will always be the most important driver of the reputation of the value of a Hofstra education. Please know that you will always be an important member of the Hofstra University community. Hofstra will always welcome you back home. On behalf of the faculty, the administration, and staff, I extend to each of you our heartiest congratulations and our warmest wishes for your success and your happiness. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, Mr. Ronan Farrow. Ronan Farrow's culture-shifting 2017 New Yorker article helped bring to light accusations of sexual assault and misconduct against media mogul Harvey Weinstein, inspiring the start of the Me Too movement. Last month, he was awarded the 2018 Pulitzer Prize for public service for what the judging committee called explosive, impactful journalism that exposed powerful and wealthy sexual predators, thus spurring a worldwide reckoning about sexual abuse of women. Mr. Farrow's deep commitment to public service has animated his work in government and media, helping traditional institutions address the frustrations and tap the promise of a new generation. He is the recipient of a 2018 George Polk Award, and his reporting for The New Yorker was honored with the National Magazine Award for Public Interest. Forbes Magazine twice named him one of the 30 under 30 most influential people in law and policy, and he was named Activist of the Year by New York Magazine. Last month, Mr. Farrow was named one of Time Magazine's 100 most influential people for 2018. He has received numerous human rights awards, including Refugees International's McCall Pierpaoli Humanitarian Award for extraordinary service to refugees and displaced people. He has been an anchor and reporter at MSNBC and NBC News, and his writing has appeared in the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, the New York Times, the Los Angeles Times, the Wall Street Journal, among other publications. In addition to his work as a contributing writer for The New Yorker, Mr. Farrow is also working with HBO to develop and front a series of investigative documentaries. Earlier in his career, Mr. Farrow served as a State Department diplomat in Afghanistan and Pakistan and reported to Secretary of State Hillary Clinton as the United States' first special advisor on global youth issues during the Arab Spring revolutions. He has also served as spokesperson for youth at UNICEF in Angola, Angola Nigeria, and the Darfur region of Sudan, and appeared as an expert witness before the U.S. Congressional Human Rights Caucus. Mr. Farrow is a Yale Law School-educated attorney and a member of the New York Bar. He attended Oxford University as a Rhodes Scholar. His new book, War on Peace, The End of Diplomacy and the Decline of American Influence, published in April by W.W. W. Norton and Company, is on the New York Times bestsellers list. Members of the Hofstra class of 2018, it is an honor to present your distinguished commencement speaker, Ronan Farrow. Hello, class of 2018. Go Pride! I thought Welcome to the Lion's Den was just what Mika Brzezinski tells you before you go on a Morning Joe panel. <laughs> Faculty, administrators, students, congrats, every one of you. Parents, you're done. Tear down those childhood bedrooms. Reclaim that extra closet space you've been yearning for. Thank you, President Rabinowitz. Thank you, Provost Simmons for that lavish introduction. I am blushing a little bit. As you may have concluded from that introduction, a whole lot happened in my life this past year, and I am really, really tired. 
I've been up so long, President Trump called Chuck Todd a sleeping son of a bitch, and I just felt jealous. I've been up so long, I feel like a side effect in one of those uncomfortable medication ads with scenes of old people dancing. It was an honor this past grueling year to crack into a series of stories that, thanks to brave sources who risked a lot to talk to me, and thanks to brave activists who continue to turn those stories into social change, seem to be having an impact due not just to me, but to a whole group of reporters banging their heads against the wall, trying to crack into those tough stories. We're hearing the voices of sexual assault and harassment survivors who for so long were silent. We are grappling as a culture with our collective failure to treat everyone with respect and dignity and to create spaces that treat men and women equally. And we're learning a whole lot about how powerful men who did despicable things were protected for so long. I know hearing a generous introduction like that, hearing about people, the way they get introduced as commencement speakers, or the way the media talks about them after the work is done, it's easy for it to seem a little bit fancy, like it was always so neat and packaged, like it was tied up with a ribbon from the beginning. I'm still tackling tough stories involving unsavory characters and fielding a fair amount of threats and incoming fire in the process, so I am grateful for that kind introduction and any recognition, any award, any shred of support. But I want to take a moment to talk about what it's like trying to do work you believe in before the moment of impact. I've talked a little bit about the challenges I faced in reporting my stories about sexual violence how the systems commanded by those powerful men I mentioned earlier came crashing down on me, too, and how people I trusted turned on me, and powerful forces in the media became instruments of suppression. I get asked about that story a lot, and fair enough, those vast systems that conspired to keep reporting on sexual violence quiet for so long are important for us to understand. But there'll be another time for that. That's not the story I want to tell you today. I want to tell you a simpler and more personal side of the story, one that without a doubt each and every one of you will experience your own version of in the coming years, a story that could have happened not just to a journalist but to an engineer or a foreman or a teacher or a doctor or a professor or a minor. The reality is I was not celebrated when I said about breaking these stories in the past year. I was a guy doing a job at a time when few people thought I was a success story. And I, I don't say that for any sympathy. I'd had an incredible career, lots of opportunities. I'd done work I was proud of, which I don't take for granted. But the reality is my career was on the rocks. And as a result of my tackling these stories as doggedly as I did, it fell apart almost completely. There was a moment about a year ago when I didn't have the institutional support of my news organization. My contract was ending. And after I refused to stop working on the story, I did not have a new one. My book publisher dropped me, refusing to look at a single page of a manuscript I'd been working on for years. I found out another news outlet was racing to scoop me on the Harvey Weinstein story. And I knew I was falling behind. I did not know if I'd ever report that story, or if a year of work would ever amount to anything. I did not know if I would let down woman after brave woman who had put their trust in me. I had moved out of my home because I was being followed and threatened. I was facing personal legal threats from a powerful, wealthy man who said he would use the best lawyers in the country to wipe me out and destroy my future. And if against all odds I got through that and found a way to publish this story, I did not know if anyone would care, because I had spent a year in rooms with executives telling me this wasn't a story, because this was before all of that extraordinary outpouring of analysis and acknowledgement of the suffering of these women and the fact that it mattered. I'm not being falsely humble. I was sincerely at a moment where I didn't know if I would have a job in journalism a month or two from then or indeed ever again. And I wish I could tell you that in that moment I was confident, that I was sure of myself. 
And if there's ever a movie, uh, I'm sure there'll be a moment where some actor smirks and lowers his shades and says, over my dead body, I'll stop reporting. And swaggers out of the room. I, don't, I guess I'm being played by Clint Eastwood or something in this movie. Let's move on. But the real life version of this was that I was heartbroken and I was scared and I had no idea if I was doing the right thing. There were so many people in my ear at that time making such good arguments that what I was doing was a mistake. Not because they were necessarily evil, but because they looked at the world as it was a year ago and concluded, this isn't worth it. You'll tell one story at the expense of so many others. They were being rational about what our culture would accept and what it would care about based on all the existing evidence. And these were people I trusted. My bosses saying, you have got to stop, let it go. My agent saying, it's causing too many speed bumps for your career, you have to let it go. Even loved ones saying, is this really worth it? Pointing out that I would risk my whole career for a story that might not even make a dent. And I seriously considered and turned over those perspectives because I felt, well, what do I know? I remember a low point last fall where I hadn't slept and I had lost a lot of weight and I was on the phone with my poor, long-suffering partner who dealt with a lot of really annoying calls from me during this period. And I was in a cab going from one meeting with a source to another and I had just learned I might get scooped entirely and I just fell apart. I was sobbing and trying not to sob, which made it worse. And I'm pretty sure there was some snot happening and it was not pretty to look at. And I remember just saying, you know, I swung too wide, I gambled too much, I lost everything, no one's ever even gonna know. And my partner said, okay, we were gonna talk about all of that, but also you were going to tip that cab driver really well. <laughs> the driver's name was Omar, and he was very supportive. Thank you, Omar. I didn't stop because I knew I'd never be able to live with myself if I didn't honor the risks those women had taken to expose this, but also less nobly because I really had gambled too much and there was no way out but through. But I did start to think maybe I made the right, wrong call. Maybe this wasn't the way I should have gone. In hindsight, it is always clear whether or not your choices were the right one. In hindsight, you know whether it was right to stick to your guns or right to turn the other cheek. Whether it was right to not give up on a story or right to just give a little to get along and move on. Not because you're cowardly, but because there are other stories and there's only so much you can do. But in the moment, you don't know how important a story is going to be. In the moment, you don't know if you're fighting because you're right or if you're fighting because your ego and your desire to win and your notion of yourself as the hero in your own story are clouding your judgment. You can have a feeling. You can have an instinct. You can have a gut reaction, a little inner voice that tells you what to do. But you can't be sure. I'm so grateful for every story of every person who stared down that uncertainty and listened to that voice telling them to do the right thing even when it wasn't clear that the right thing was strategic or smart or even possible. A group of student activists in your class, including Nandi Piper, have confronted issues of sexual discrimination and violence head on right on this campus. Nandi came to Hofstra as part of a program aiming to increase the number of students in historically underrepresented groups pursuing careers in science and technology. Now, she's been president of Collegiate Women of Color. Yeah. She's joined forces with advocates for safer sex and the queer and trans people of color coalition and the campus feminist coalition here on campus to organize events like a Take Back the Night March last month and lobby successfully for a new student advisory board to help implement Title IX of the Civil Rights Act and make sure students have a say in how these issues are handled on campus. These can be uncomfortable issues to confront and talk about but you're having the tough conversations already. Your classmate, Ron Court, is also graduating today. Ron was born with a spinal muscular atrophy, a rare disorder that affects the control of muscle movement. He uses a wheelchair and a respirator to help him breathe. 
everything was arrayed against Ron just performing simple tasks and getting through the day. But he doesn't just get through the day. He didn't just become valedictorian and student government president and captain of the wheelchair basketball team in high school. He didn't just make the dean's list all four years here at Hofstra. He works his ass off to help other people. He has volunteered with student access services here on campus to support other people with disabilities. And he even invented a smaller, quieter, more affordable version of his respirator, which he's pursuing a patent for, and will be taking to market, hopefully, after he graduates. Investors, come on, call this guy. And then there's Lucero Sosa, a first-generation college student born in Lima, Peru. She came to the United States with her parents when she was five years old. And when she first arrived here at Hofstra, she struggled. She battled profound feelings of isolation and stress-related illness. Now, she's been a resident assistant. She works 20 hours a week in the student enrollment office at Hofstra's law school. And she's graduating after just three years because she took 18 credits every single semester she was here. And in the midst of all of this, she has helped to run Hofstra's student-run Catholic group, the Newman Club which does community service here in Long Island and in New York City, including clothing and food drives. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in these things, for as you do this, you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who hear you. That's 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. The lessons of those students who stood up and let their own strong senses of principle guide them and tackle tough topics are important because this isn't going to get any easier as you go through life. Right now, we are surrounded by a culture that tells us to take the easy way out, that tries to tip the scales in favor of getting paid rather than protesting, that tells us to kill the story instead of poking the bear, a culture that tells us not to trust that inner voice that says to fight. And the reason that culture sends us that message is we look around and we see people taking the easy way out, doing the immoral thing or the selfish thing, and being rewarded. And it's easy to conclude that that's just the way the world works. So here's what I would say to you. No matter what you choose to do, no matter what direction you go in, whether you are a doctor treating refugees or a financier making money off of foreclosures, and I genuinely hope you do not do that, <laughs> you will face a moment where you have absolutely no idea what to do, and it will be totally unclear to you what the right thing is for you, for your family, for your community. And I hope that in that moment, you're generous with yourself. But trust that inner voice, because more than ever, we need people to be guided by their own senses of principle and not the whims of a culture that prizes ambition and sensationalism and celebrity and vulgarity and doing whatever it takes to win. Because if enough of you listen to that voice, and if enough of you prove that this generation isn't going to just make the same mistakes as the one before, then doing the right thing won't seem as rare or as hard or as special. No pressure or anything. Congratulations, class of 2018. Thank you, Mr. Farrow, for that inspiring speech. Excellence in teaching always has been and continues to be our highest priority here at Hofstra. We pride ourselves on the quality of teaching taking place on our campus. It is therefore an enormous honor for someone to be selected as Teacher of the Year. Every year, graduating students select recipients for this singular honor. This afternoon, we are joined by two recipients of the Teacher of the Year Awards. 
Carlo A. Generelli, Associate Professor of Radio, Television, and Film in the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication, and Richard J. Perzer, Associate Professor of Industrial Engineering in the Fred DeMatta School of Engineering and Applied Science. Please come forward to be recognized by President Rabinowitz. Hey, I just gotta say, I love this goddamn class. You guys are great. Go out there and kick some ass. We are delighted to recognize alumni from the class of 1968 who are here celebrating the 50th anniversary of their Hofstra graduation. I am pleased to introduce Michael Sorrentino, class of 2005, secretary of the Hofstra Alumni Organization, who will recognize these graduates. I heard the uh, <clears throat> School of Comm students were going a little crazy when there was that mic feedback. I was watching your facial expressions. Uh, congratulations to class of 2018. We are so proud of you. Welcome to the Hofstra University Alumni Organization. You are joining a network of more than 136,000 members spread across 50 states and more than 100 countries. For some of you, your career students may end today, but you'll always remember that you're a part of that Hofstra family. Hey, for those of you who've graduated, those of us who graduated before, you have, they forged paths in virtually every aspect of the working world. And through the use of social media, it'll be easy to now stay in touch with all of your classmates, friends, and the entire alumni body. Be sure to stay involved with the university by making connections to our network of leaders who offer you a helpful hand and much advice. We are here. We want to help you. You're not alone. You've worked so hard to get here. Now, we want you to use our brand to help leverage your career and your future. You have earned this. Your connection does not end at graduation should be just the beginning. And certainly, one day, soon, or down the road, when you've achieved your success, remember to offer your helping hand, your time, your experience, your advice to those Hofstra students who come after you. I have two Hofstra students working with me now. I learn just as much from them as they do from me. We help one another. You gotta keep this legacy alive. As Hofstra, it's a lifelong bond now that we all get to enjoy and take advantage of. It's a privilege today to have among us another group of Hofstra graduates. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating the members of the class of 1968 who are celebrating their 50th anniversary of their graduation today. Will the members of the class of 1968 please come forward to be recognized by President Rabinowitz. Jan Aronoff, <laughs> Kenneth Davis, <laughs> Olga Dobrovolsky Miklajewski, <laughs> Stephen Fink, <laughs> Louis Heller, <laughs> AJ Paluska Jr., <laughs> Harold Waxman, <laughs> Angela Zero Redden, <laughs> and a member of the Hofstra Board of Trustees, Diana Lake. there now. 
will the candidates for Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Business Administration, Bachelor of Engineering, and Bachelor of Science degrees from the Frank G. Zarb School of Business, the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication, and the Fred DeMatta School of Engineering and Applied Science, please stand. Mr. President, I have the honor to present all the candidates who have successfully completed all the requirements for the baccalaureate degree from their respective school or college. I recommend, together with their appropriate dean and faculty, that you confer the appropriate baccalaureate degrees upon these candidates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hofstra University, and the Regents of the State of New York, and upon the recommendations of the provost, your deans, and your faculty, I am honored to confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Arts, Arts Bachelor of Business Administration, Bachelor of Engineering, or Bachelor of Science as appropriate. Congratulations. Will the graduates Please step forward to be recognized by President Rabinowitz, Trustees Lake and Schaefer, and the Dean of your school. Your names will be read by Senior Associate Dean of the Frank G. Zarb School of Business, Joya Bales, Dean of the Center for University Advising, Mark Oppenheim, Senior Associate Dean of Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, S. Stavros Valenti, and Senior Associate Dean for the School of Education, Stacy Zalewski. Graduates of the Frank G. Zorb School of Business. Ron Court, <laughs> Valerie Seglio, <laughs> Shi Zhang, <laughs> Rong Zhao, <laughs> Daniela Valente, <laughs> Gabriella Franzblau. Amy Zhang, Bashiva Paul, Jennifer Allen, Simran Kashap, Erin Colburn, Elise Wright, Harold Yenig Lazo, Katie Parnell, Danielle Nutzel, Kira McCall. Iyada Rashid, Adelise Reister, Matthew DiCastro, Hanya Akbik, Alisa Urban, Amanda Mararo, Joseph Shordas, Elijah Lewis, Mike. Michael Lillis, Andrew Chung, Chahut Thiwan, Kenneth Fu, Shivangi Kumar, Danielle Heinsen, Hope Lefko, Christine Nalu Dawson. Briada Polbus, Abdullah bin Wasif, Ilior Alive, Ravi Govind, Deja Payne, Hada Michelson, Kavita Kalkasing, Lisa Goldschmidt, Robert Stoltz, Anne Marie Artada, 
Gurmit Singh. Diana Nurgoria. Maria Chung. Kayla Zabro. Sarah Schmidt. Deirdre Murhead. Faith Parpolardo. Brendan Valeri. Rodney Scherscher. Matthew Iacona. Matthew Malloy. Adam Sadak. Sadak. George Gregorio. Mitchell Podgorozik. Peggy Kershavili. Michelle Huang. John Pacaber. Cole Considine. Dale Stasco. Matthew Paratine. Luke Gomez. Alexander Mosner. Christian Dakota. Brendan Kavanaugh. James Kingsley, Dylan Alderman, Brett Osman, John Concannon, Christopher Weiss, Tara Fechtig, Elizabeth Jacobson, Imani Brown, Clarissa Marquez. Oops. Zachary Camarada, Julia Sachaki, Isabella Nargentino, Corinne Arendt, Danielle Esposito, Sophie Levitin, Ryan Rosen, Kevin Atanisi, Andrew Mendes, Nicholas Rosso, Maxwell Martin, Edward Audibert, Connor Ferrelli, Paul Suhusky, Glenn Nace, Mackenzie Kramer, Georgina King, Christopher Vanchieri, Rose Mina, Sylvia May, Nicholas Silvestri, Christina Scotto, Mackenzie McMahon, John Alexander Daniels, Xavier Ray Charles, Nandy Piper, Weston Bauskas, Jordan Schuss, Akashdeep Ranu, Brianna Weimer, Thomas Fraher, James Mills, Jessica Gilmore, Marilyn O'Connor, Sean Elliott, Samantha Gallo, Lauren Grosso, Danielle Romero, Owen Cecilman, Alan Shears, Matthew Swift, Mitchell Barrox, Sydney Vorby, Ethan Kerwin, Ali Abbas, Joshua Beck, Stephen Sullivan, Robert Pavori, Maxwell Cohen, Jackson Yurch, Tanya Khan, Alexis Finn, Jamie DeBella, Jessica Nguyen, Natasha Khan, Penlong Lin, Yijun Sun,
Chen Liu. Jiguan Chen. Shenzhou Sun. Brian Sofio. Sean Agrawal. Scott Geyer. Julia Calvuzzi. Benjamin Berman. Alexander Mursky. Michael Meyerbach. Dylan Klein. Brian Finn. Joshua Wally. Najad Abu Hamzi. Blaze Cartelli. Nico Vulinovic. Gabriella Perini. Everett Wilgris Pipe. Robert Fur. Philip Bonani. Jordan Rosenwing. Vishal Shivani. Christopher DeFlorio. Daniel Tietjen. Richard McDonald. Is it Sean? Sean Kamen. Thomas Berry. Nevin Shah. Penegitois Cleverness. <laughs> Reginos Cepedas. Daphne Corditas. Nicholas Pandori. David Bradlick. Goodwin Sotom. Edwin Cervellan. Zana Himani. Terry Gorundona. Emma Soloway. Anthony Imperato. Nicholas Bartolonzo. Daniel Scarpula. Xavier Vasquez. Simone Sanvito. Grace Young. Shannon Hogarty. Joshua Metzler. Kayla Zerfoss. Dana Craig. Jacob Simonson. Gabrielle De Olvieri. <laughs> Kenneth Hanlon. Austin Jenkins. Jefferson Peraza. Jonathan Valerio. Tyler Walsh. Matthew Bevlacqua. Henry Centauri. Edwin Mulhern. Sahir Milwala. Nicholas Lewis. Daniel Williams. Kin Lam. Bao Bin Lu. Xavier Alvarez. Sabrina Ronduva. Lucero Sosa. Jordan Weiss. 
Jessica Kelly. Reagan Clevenger. Katrina Tacanelli. Victoria Griffin. Nicole Major. Paolo Quidaja. Amy Sassoon. Exfol Zhang. Jin Wong. Nicole Taylor. Daniel Bronkonski. Kyle Ritchie. Jebelex Montaz. Ricky Arlotto. Charlie Bradley. Nicholas Shota. Arasima Ortega. Edwin Benilla. Anthony Marabo. Aaron Bieber. <laughs> Ashley Shermack. Kashawn Gamery. <laughs> Eli Levy. Lathan Lev. Alyssa Pinnell. Taylor Dubay. Emily Baldwin. Tamara Ishanovo. Yejing Lu. Yin Lu. Maya Piawa. Gurdeep Singh. Nikolai Schrager. Nicholas Micah. Anthony Sawley. Christopher Catalano. Michael Sistar. Alexa Strickland. Matthew Romeo. Daniel Domagala. Ronald Winkler. Thomas Owens. Nicholas Nappy. Arturo Rapia. Michael Anthony Smith. Caitlin Chartier. Joseph DiMonte. Tatiana Reagan. David Morrow. Aaron Kiley. Brandon Drum. Andrew Adamo. Gregory Hoffman. Christy Murphy. Rick Zhao. Christopher Schultz. Arona Wynn. Hal Casado. Lindsay Gutterson. Nargis Noor. Simon Wang. Swarif Ahmad. Sarah Mahmood. Mahibar Rahman. Kelly Dorney. William Golden. Kyle Admasgeen. Julieta Falbo. Alyssa Parsons. Sarah Marie Corey. Graduates of the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication, Alan Kelly, Emily Hernandez, Danielle Siegel, Heather Alexis, Kevin Gomez, Gomes, Jason Stimak, Alexander Friedman, Christopher Braun, Sarah Hysong, Grayson Hansen, Emma Brad, Christina Amico, Nicholas Savino, James Troisi, Livingston Ferrand, Denise Pinto, Kelly O'Brien, Savannah Malloy, Danielle Drop, Sarah Whitman, Christina Batansis Orell, 
Katherine Yanchak, Andrew Garcia, Anwar Ahmad, Kimberly Dossett, Laura Logan, Mackenzie Smith, Daphne Christidis, Pakalady Cheem, Julia Humphrey, Caitlin Turner, Alexis Lucas, Robert Dolan, Trevor Parrish, Courtney Richmond, Christopher Esposito, Jordan Barry, Sarah Schwartz, Lauren Acone, Robin Perillo, Emily Killany, James Sweeney, Christopher Bursner, Jordan Del Miedo, Derek Zhang, Arturo Chachon, James Feza, Molly Sonnenberg, Christine Spaniolo, Sarah Mendoza, Matthew Kenijani, Anna Striebling, Kaylee Marr, Cyril Penn, Taylor Bellman, Ethan Marshall, Anders George uh, Schneider, Patrick Potter, John Napolitano, Giovanni Anuccelli, Chase uh, Bridgers, Marco Miglio, Daniel uh, Nickender, Kara Schilder, Christian Scoville, Mark Mausner, Mahong Lu, John Grimaldi, Daniel Hansen, Brian Clark, Stephanie Ruscio, Megan McGuire, Tarek Conklin, Haley Manfit, Antonio Grillo, Jeffrey Werner, Peter Jacopoulos, Jacqueline Runam, Joseph Sibilia, Peyton Muse, Shannon Caturno, uh, Diasha Davis, Mehet Kokar, Dayan Sanderlin, Laurel O'Keefe, Casey Lampkin. Emily Hassett. Kimberly Ahrens. Jenna Tepesquale. Rebecca Haynes. Skylar Haddad. Michaela Pantano. Victoria Cullo. Ashley Fazio. Madeline Roman. Jessica Yawn. Danielle Ferrara. Regina Ferrara. Mark Russell. Connor Adams. Tyler Johnson. Zachary Kale. 
Robert Palaise. Tyler Tyne. Joshua Timko. Evan Studwell. Michaela Hawley. Kayla Vicelli. Jonathan Liner. Elizabeth Kleinen. Daniel Wolf. Maxwell Whitman. Matthew Pivarnik. Christine Carvalho. Randy Santiago. Chelsea Cueto. Callista Knight. Amelia Appleman. Wendy Markert. Jamie Giorgiano. Christine Harvey. Shina Storch. Daniel Paul. Jessica Gershback. Amanda Seacamp. Beatrice Cavalcante. Nandy Mignon. Gabrielle Downs. Juncia Seda. Francis Shirley. Raven Cordis. Ty Davis. Sierra Paley. Antonio Akawali. Larissa Klaus. Robert English. John Dugilino. <laughs> Amanda Christo. Courtney Coach. John Potito. Tara Egan. Evan Domkowski. Peter Gay. Dominique Kylie Todd. Brianna Vellalong. Shannon Abral. Alita Dabby. Amanda Betazi. Jillian Barati. Monique Laybird. Joshua Cohen. Emily Bravo. Marie Holland. Alexi Cohan. Nicole Kaiko. Kirsten Brendlin. Mackenzie Caldwell. Allison Eichler. Michael Smith. Alexander Bukowski. Andrew Bogan. Cotter Demet, Andrea Vega, <laughs> Olivia Klawan, Susamu Araki, Linda Apokolov, Edward Burstall, Zachary Zweibel, Rashidum Barum. Hannah Bilbro, 
Evan Paradiso, Nicole Buckley, Randy Hutchinson, Joshua Ringler, Jillian Bronstein, Chang Ang Chang, Lindsay Ryan, Chen Kwong, Christopher Ahern, Abigail, Abigail Sullivan, Jillian Laganelli, Allison Bonaviso, Lillian Strait Ratat, Zachary Alexander, Lindsay Shulman, Keaton Ramjit, Kristen Yakara, Devonte London, Daryl Baker, Gina Ray, Samuel Friedland, Matthew Hilarero, Valerie Ramos, Nicholas Geisler, Geisler, Michael Ortiz, Carissa Newkirk, Alina Leon, Jean Pierre Guzne, graduates of the Fred DeMattis School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, Brandon Singh, Ariba Rahman, William Deming, Matthew Ania, Andrew Jenkins, John Franco Leto, Brandon Innes, Dylan Harrell, Alexander Spiker, Gordon Gellert, Emily Root, Kaylee Grimes, Christian Einitz, Kieran Quinn, Peter Scavelli, Nicholas Miranda, Jesse Petrucci, Stephen Primus, Taylor Ninesling, Timothy Daigle, Cheryl St. Pierre, Jay Blakey, Julianne Nutzel, Stephanie Tatry, Lorenzo Vaccaro, Justin Tomasic, Jesus Gaitan, Eric Garcia, Ralph Poliesi, Olivia Macedo, Siobhan Sturgis, Christopher Wagner, Aaron Harewood, Sarah Hussein, Hussein Joma, Famida Alamanika, Saida Manzor, Hamza Debar, Ryan Henning, Eric Katzen, Scott Grasso, Jamie Sasha, Kristen Melser, Christine Crossfield, Linnea Barber, Raymond Tonsik, Alexa Marquise, Matthew Linen, Robert Alderson, James Muscarello, Michael Binowitz, Caitlin Burgess, Justin Sanchez, uh, Josh and Deep Singh, Manpreet Horta, Luke Lane, Lewis Bush, Marina Hatsinadreou, Peter Rommel, Pablo Casado Lopez, Manny Walcott, Thomas Germano, 
Amanda Bigger, Mariana Moroto, Gabriela Espinoza, Abdul Barikal, Noah Rude Goldman, Megan Murphy, Jasmine El Malwani, Noel Sugatan, Armando Renado, Bradley Rowe, Daniel Neymar, Mohammed Shaker, Mersim Rezimatio, Christian Garcia, Nafkiran Chima, Anthony Rubriol, Sean Cunningham, Antonio Chimienti, Stephen Mora, James Ray, Nicholas Thorne, Daniel Sloan, Esther Martini, Victor Daniel Kalio, Maniac John, Vivida Vitek Vishinani Talwa. Congratulations, graduates. Great job, 2018. Mr. President, members of the Board of Trustees, administrators, faculty, graduates, and guests, we take this time to recognize three groups of honor students who have distinguished themselves during their undergraduate careers here at Hofstra. The first group of students to be recognized have achieved high honors in their respective majors and a distinguished academic record overall. They completed a departmental honors project or thesis, followed by an oral examination or defense of their thesis topic. These students may be identified by the blue and gold scapular worn over their academic attire. Students receiving honors in the major, please stand to be recognized. group of honors students are those receiving bachelor's degrees with Latin honors. They may be identified also by blue and gold scapulars. These students are graduating from Hofstra with a distinguished overall grade point average. Students graduating cum laude have achieved a GPA of 3.6. Those graduating magna cum laude have achieved a 3.8 GPA and students graduating summa cum laude have attained a 3.9 GPA. Students receiving bachelor's degrees with Latin honors distinction, please stand to be recognized. And finally, the third group of honors students are Hofstra University Honors College graduates. They may be identified by the Hofstra University Honors College Medal. Honors College students must pass strict admissions requirements, maintain high levels of academic achievement, and complete the honors curriculum. Will the Hofstra University Honors College Associates college graduates and college recognition recipients and honors college graduates with distinction, please stand to be recognized.
So um, it says President's remarks, and we're, since Senator Schumer couldn't be here, I was going to, maybe I should deliver a speech to you. Because I, I have it memorized by heart. That you, but no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you my class gift, and that is I'm going to wave my remarks. But I know how to get applause. I know how to get a round of applause. But I am going to ask you to uh, do one final, participate in one final tradition at the university. And I'm going to ask the platform party and all the graduates, but not the audience, to stand. And I ask the students to face the audience. And we all know nobody got here by themselves. How about giving the ones who helped you a big round of applause? Class of 2018, please turn back around for a moment. We have one final order of business. Graduates, to make your commencement ceremony complete, I ask you to move your tassel from right to left to signify the end of this stage of your academic pursuits. Following this commencement, there will be a reception for graduates, guests, faculty, and members of the platform party at the David S. Mack Physical Education Complex that is adjacent to this arena. I ask that the audience remain in their place until the academic recession has left the stage. Congratulations, class of 2018!